In this video, we'll be talking about Tay-Sachs disease, which is a lysosomal storage disorder. So Tay-Sachs disease is a rare inherited genetic disorder that primarily affects the nervous system. And it was actually reported by Warren Tay and Bernard Sachs. And based on their name, it is known as Tay-Sachs disease. In this case, there is a mutation in the chromosome 15. And this mutation is in the gene that encodes for the enzyme hexosaminidase A. So this particular enzyme is responsible for breaking down of GM2 gangliocide uh, lipid. And this lipid is broken down or catabolized by this enzyme. When this enzyme is not produced due to the, men, due to the mutation or there is reduction in the production, in that case, GM2 gangliocide doesn't break down or cataboli catabolism of GM2 gangliocide is abrogated. This leads to an increase in the GM2 gangliocide in the neuron. And this is the causal uh, for Tay-Sachs disease. That is why this particular disease is also known as GM2 gangliosidosis or hexaminidase A deficiency. Okay, so why GM2 gangliocide accumulation in the neuron is actually harmful? So GM2 gangliocide accumulates in the lysosome and it has been seen that it leads to progressive neurodegeneration. Also, neuronal dysfunction was pretty prominent in the patients with Tay-Sachs disease. It has been seen that these excess amount of uh, ex excess amount of uh, gangliocytes can lead to in neuroinflammation, and at least this has been shown in the animal model where hex A is mutated. Now, let me tell you that CNS dysfunction and PNS dysfunction. Both of these are pretty common in case of Tay-Sachs disease. In case of adults, there are problems with motor skills. Symptoms of Tay-Sachs disease usually appear within the first few months of life. And that may include loss of motor skill, like infants with Tay-Sachs disease typically lose the ability to roll over, crawl or sit tight. So that is pretty typical. Then there is exaggerated startled response of the baby. There could be loss of cognitive development. They might find it hard to communicate with the uh, child with the same age group. There could be also uh, typical developmental delays and they might not reach the typical milestone when compared to a similar age group child. Also, there are onset of seizures in early life. Also, it's not present for every patient, but it's pretty common. Other than that, muscle weakness is pretty common in case of Tay-Sachs disease. The inheritance pattern of hex A mutation or the Tay-Sachs disease is actually autosomal recessive type of inheritance pattern. That means in the if the parents are both carriers, then there is only 25% of the chance that in the next generation, there would be one affected child. There could be also carrier childs which might propagate the disease in the subsequent generation. Now it turns out that inbreeding can lead to this kind of disease and also it can increase the chance of this kind of disease. So inbred populations like Askanaji Jews population, French Canadian population, Amis population are more vulnerable towards this kind of uh, Tay-Sachs disease or they are at higher risk of developing genetic disorders like this. So there could be different time points of onset of Tay-Sachs disease like infantile within three to four to six months, juvenile within two to five years, chronic where one to second decade of the life and ultimately late onset that generally happens in the 30s. So the early onset symptoms include decreased muscle tone, abnormal reflexes, seizures, visual disturbances, etc. Whereas the late onset symptoms include mostly motor defects, bipolar disorders and mental problems. Tay-Sachs disease can be diagnosed using a uh, normal kind of uh, blood test where from the serum sample hex a activity is examined using elisa there could be also genetic te testing which is much more expensive but very high throughput and reliable there could be also an eye examination during an eye examination the healthcare professional would actually look at the cherry red spot in the macula of the patient and that's pretty significant sig significantly diagnostics of tay-sachs disease 
So the next generation sequencing has discovered many mutations which are pretty much prevalent in Ashkenazi Jew Jewish population and many other uh, inbred populations. And each of these nucleotide differences have changed protein and the activity of these enzymes. So now this kind of high throughput approaches would allow us to understand the Tay-Sachs disease pathology or etiology in a much better fashion. When it comes to treatment of Tay-Sachs disease, there is no cure because it's a genetic disorder. But managing the symptom is crucial. So for example, there could be medications which can take care of the seizures or muscle stiffness. There could be supportive care like uh, physiotherapists, healthcare professionals, etc. And ultimately, there could be nutritional support. Sometimes Tay-Sachs patients might be requiring some kind of nutritional support like a like feeding tube. I hope this was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. You can uh, follow us on Instagram or Facebook. And you can support our channel using Paytm, PayPal or Super Thanks options even next video.